Hello, the future ACCs. This is Vishnu Vijay, a proud film drama, and I am here to address yet again another common issue faced by the ACC students. So, this particular issue is in relation to a particular optional paper. Okay, folks. So, there is this one particular optional paper that a lot of students are a bit skeptical about. Should they choose it? Even if they do, what will they learn from it? And will it be beneficial for their career? Is it difficult? Etc. Okay, folks. A lot of questions piling up just like that. Now, which paper am I talking about? I'm talking about the Advanced Performance Management paper, or as we call it, the APM paper. If you look at the pass rates of this particular exam, it's like one of the lowest pass rate, has one of the lowest pass rate out of all the other papers, isn't it? However, once you look at the syllabus and understand as to what this particular exam is all about, it might catch your curiosity. Okay, folks, so let's, let me just give you an overview as to what the syllabus of advanced performance management is and some more guidance of the exam structure as well, shall we? So when we talk about the advanced performance management paper, what exactly is its syllabus content? The entire syllabus of APM is basically classified into six syllabus areas. And the first one is basically part A, strategic planning and control. Okay, so what exactly are we gonna learn in this particular area? This is where we learn about the corporate objectives and how an organization achieves them and how exactly can they measure the extent to which they have achieved that particular objective as well. Okay, folks, so all these things are considered within this particular area. So basically, strategy related topics, isn't it? And have we learned about strategy related topics in any other papers? Most definitely, yes, isn't it? We've learned that within the SBL or strategic business leader paper, isn't it? So what if I told you the most of the topics that are contained within this particular syllabus area is kind of similar to what we've already learned in the SBL paper. That's kind of awesome, isn't it? So that's basically the actual situation. Okay, folks, so definitely the topics covered in SBL, it can be seen within the APM paper as well. Okay, folks, however, this would be tested in a bit different manner. That's basically the only uh, difference here. And of course, we do have a few models to look at uh, within this particular syllabus areas as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that's basically all about part A. Moving on to the next syllabus area, that is part B. Okay, so what's the idea here? Part B is basically the impact of risk and uncertainty on organizational performance. Okay, so what's the idea here, guys? So this is a syllabus area where we have a few number of calculations involved. Okay, folks, when it comes to risk and uncertainty, we talk about expected values and various other probability theory and various other uh, concepts as well, isn't it? So that is exactly what we will be learning in this particular syllabus area. And of course, it's comparatively the smallest syllabus area among all the others as well. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. Now, moving on to the next one, we have part C, that is, Performance management information and developments in technology. So this is yet again another small syllabus area that we have, okay, folks, which includes all the technological aspects. Okay, folks, such as data, data analytics, uh, information systems, how we use them, what all softwares are there for an organization to use, etc. Okay, folks, so all these things are covered within this particular syllabus area. And of course, we will also learn about some new interesting technologies as well. Okay, books such as cloud technology. Well, that's basically something that you're already familiar with, isn't it? What about RFID tax or RFID technology? That's yet again, something that we look at as well. Okay, folks. And of course, there are various other uh, technology related aspects we will learn within this particular syllabus area. However, the primary focus, okay, folks, for each and every syllabus area, the primary focus would be on improving the performance of an organization, okay, folks? So the question that each and every syllabus content answers would be, how exactly can we improve the performance within an organization? How can we manage performance? How can we measure performance? This is exactly what the APM syllabus is all about, okay, folks? So remember that. And of course, moving on to the next syllabus area, that is part D, strategic performance measurement. So it's not just about managing the performance, it's all about measuring the performance as well, isn't it? So what you have to understand here is that there are a few theoretical aspects to the content of with the syllabus. However, 
Equally, we also have some uh, calculation or we have to do some numbers within the syllabus as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. Now, moving on to the next one, we have part E, performance evaluation and corporate failure. Okay, folks, this is a really interesting syllabus area, let me tell you that. Okay, folks, so when it comes to this particular syllabus area, our primary focus is on some models such as the balance scorecard as well as Fitzgerald uh, building and building uh, block model as well as the uh, performance pyramid which is a new model that you will learn as well. And over and above that, there are some models that you can use or there are some techniques that you can use to predict as to whether a corporate would fail or not. Sounds interesting, isn't it? So this is exactly what we will be learning within this particular syllabus area that is performance evaluation and corporate failure. Okay, folks. So that's basically the primary theoretical content of the uh, advanced performance management paper. And over and above that, there's now a new additional syllabus area as well. Okay, so what exactly is this? This is basically part F, employability and technology skills. Okay, so what exactly is this particular uh, syllabus area all about? With regards to this, what you have to understand is that we don't necessarily have any theoretical aspects to learn within this particular syllabus area. Okay, folks, it's all just the practical skills that you would require to tackle a question within the CBE environment. Okay, folks, so ACC has basically included with this particular syllabus area too, so that you can uh, be updated regarding the computer related technologies as well as computer related skills that you can utilize in your CBE exam. And not just that, it will also guide you in your future as well, isn't it? Of course, uh, modern business industries require employees who has good technological skills as well as good computer skills as well, isn't it? So definitely, this is exactly what this particular syllabus area is all about. Okay, folks, it's all about improving your employability and computer and technology skills, as simple as that. Okay, folks, so that's basically the entire syllabus of advanced performance management. However, we're more curious about the exam structure, isn't it? So let's not waste any time. Let's jump on to that as well, shall we? So let's take a look at the exam structure now, shall we? So when we talk about the exam structure of the advanced performance management paper, we have two sections here. Okay, folks, we have section A and section B. Now, when it comes to section A, we have one 50 mark question, okay? Sounds kind of intriguing, isn't it? However, it's kind of an easy thing. Okay, folks, if you think about it, it's kind of easy to structure 50 mark questions or answers to the 50 mark questions. Okay, folks, we don't worry about that. And of course, we've discussed about a lot of exam techniques, a lot of exam tips, tricks that you can use, especially within the CBE environment as well, within our sessions, as well as uh, within the video question marathon as well, isn't it? What is the video question marathon? Basically, the video exam kit that we uh, we have practiced throughout our sessions. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. So, uh, using all those exam techniques, you can easily score the 50 marks. Now, we're speaking about this particular 50 marks. Out of this 50 marks, four marks are, are available for professional marks, isn't it? And that's like the easiest mark to obtain. Okay, folks, all you have to do is you just have to provide the uh, answer in the format of a report or any other document that the examiner states. Okay, folks, in most cases in the advanced performance management paper, the examiner will require you to prepare a report. Okay, folks, so if you present your answer in the format of a report, then effectively you get that particular four marks in it, as simple as that. And of course, provide the appropriate headings and subheadings as well as introductions, conclusions, etc. That's basically the idea here. So that's basically it. Okay, folks, obtain those four marks. And of course, it's kind of easy to structure your answer as long as you can read the requirement carefully as well. Okay, folks, that's yet again another key point to note over here. So that's basically section A. And another aspect in relation to section A is that only questions or only topics from syllabus area A, C, and D will be tested within the 50 mark question. That's it again, another hint that has been provided by ACCA to all the APM students. Okay, folks, they will only test syllabus area A, C, as well as D within this particular uh, section. Now, moving on to the next session, that is section B, which is worth uh, 50 marks yet again, isn't it? However, we have two questions worth 25 marks each. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea behind section B. 
And of course, these questions can be tested from any and everywhere from the scenario. Okay, because there's no fixed uh, syllabus area in this particular portion because the examiner has already given away a lot of things to us in it. So basically, uh, we will have to practice, we have to cover the entire syllabus of APM to be fully prepared for the exam. And we have to understand each and every concepts and each and every topics within the syllabus as well. Okay, folks. And a really, I would say, a common misconception that a lot of students would have is basically in relation to the fact as to whether this particular exam is a theoretical paper or is it a practical paper. Okay, folks. So let me tell you guys, this particular exam is both. Okay, folks, it has 50% of calculation as well as 50% of discussion, just like the performance management paper as well. Okay, folks, however, if you look at the performance management paper, it did have a bit majority of uh, the uh, calculation aspect to it as well. However, when it comes to advanced performance management, yes, we are discussing a lot of things, but we are discussing the meaning behind the numbers, isn't it? So that is basically a key point that you have to keep in mind, okay, folks. And of course, there are strategy related topics as well. However, the primary, I would say, objective of each and every requirement would be to command on the performance of the organization that has been provided to you, okay, folks. So that's basically a really key point that you have to keep in mind, okay, folks. Whenever you think APM or whenever you are uh, practicing questions regarding APM, think about this, okay, folks. How exactly? can this particular event or this particular requirement impact the performance that is a key point to remember throughout the preparation for the APM exam okay folks so remember that so that is basically all about the exam structure of advanced performance management another really important point that you should note here is that the APM syllabus has some assume knowledge concepts to it okay folks what is assume knowledge all about this is basically when the examiner assumes that the apm candidate should have these kinds of knowledge okay folks it won't be separately pointed out within the syllabus however the examiner assumes that or the examiner expects the particular candidate to have this knowledge what exactly are the assumed knowledge required for the apm exam these are basically some topics in relation to the performance management paper as well as the strategic business leader paper as well. Okay, folks. So what you have to understand here is that it may not be uh, separately pointed out. However, if you are a proud fin trauma, then most definitely you will know that we have covered the entire assume knowledge as well as all the other advanced topic of advanced performance management throughout our sessions, isn't it? So remember that. And of course, we will also be practicing a lot of questions, both uh, exam standard as well as past paper questions as well within the CBE environment so that you can learn all the exam techniques, tips and tricks and all the other related aspects. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session. And of course, remember, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you, you can get notified regarding a lot of more informative content. Okay, folks. So if you have any questions, you can just type that within the comment box. I'm, feel, I'm happy to answer all of them. Okay, folks. So this is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Mm -hmm.